From LA Late News headquarters in Santa Monica, this is the Midday Report on LA Late. It's a big midday on LA with incredible great news about your formless check update of L of 2022 and this recording will go over the four stimulus check on home i stand your recreate edition and also street and stimulus and the breaking news the federal reserve announces its policy move for 2022 not just for march all the breaking news it came in minutes ago folks and you're going to be shocked this impacts your ss 300 but first we're going to start with build back better act we're going to go over the incredible eighty thousand dollars of checks now now paying out and how you get those big sums of money we'll be going over cr the latest details on that six stimulus heating up as well and third stimulus but in the second half of this video we're going to go back over to vladimir putin in ukraine breaking developing details as president Zelensky addresses the american people today and the joint chief of, and the joint session of congress recession growing and the recessionary concerns growing along with inflationary concerns what did the Fed say minutes ago, and what did the Fed see this morning? All the latest details on what Wall Street reacted to the news from the Federal Reserve. Are they seeing big problems? And then six stimulus. Meantime, the latest developing details on what's happening overseas that impacts you back home. China and Russia. Debt default in Russia. And then the situation unfolding with a potential ceasefire with Russia. Then what do we need to know about six stimulus caused by Russia? Oil, wheat, and grass, grass, uh, wheat, and grain impacted by Russia, and a potential recession for world economies caused by Russia. Meantime, what do you need to know about that Russian default? How has it impacted you at home? And which default date? Is it March 16th or April 4th? Is the one that I want to focus on. Then we'll be looking back and forward on what has happened in Russia and Ukraine that impacts you domestically. Boy, we have a lot of breaking news plus. I'll be going over the latest FOMC mo notes from j Powell released minutes ago. It impacts your SS300. It's a big broadcast with a lot of breaking news from the shores of Santa Monica to the shores of the Black Sea. All the breaking news domestically and internationally for my viewers overseas in Ukraine and all across the globe with those Western allies. The details of Homa LA and I stand with I stand with Ukraine start right now in a special edition with that FOMC notes released minutes ago. And good afternoon, everybody. It is a big day on home. I stand with Ukraine edition. And boy, a lot of breaking news as the recessionary concerns, inflationary concerns make a big pivot. But Jay Powell, he did not deliver as expected. What did Jay Powell say minutes ago? And why is Wall Street down dramatically? Yes, it's a shocker. And I'm going to go over the latest details of what Jay Powell's comments were minutes ago, your Fed hair head and how it impacts your SS300. But first, we're going to start with the Build Back Better Act, then the CR, then the the, the big money, those $80,000 of checks, and then that rent money, and then we get turned to Ukraine and Russia, the latest unfolding across the board. If you're new to this channel, home and street and stimulus in prime time is recording which the first half impacts your money and the second half impacts your money domestically and internationally because of Vladimir Putin. A very fluid recording and the first half starts of course with Build Back. We'll get to the Fed's comments just minutes from now. But first let's start with Build Back Better Act passing, says the White House and also Congress. In prime time on tonight's evening's LA at 5 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, we're going to go over all these incredible details at hand because this is the bifurcated recording where the first half is about your money and the second half is about international events that impact your money. Build Back Better Act will pass as the White House. That's three classes of checks and three add-ons. Let's look at those incredible checks. It amounts to about $15,000 across the land, and those checks have three clusters. In that first cluster, we have the huge 
money for hazard pay. One more year, the earning of tax credit. One more year, the CTC, the $4,000 of elder care, the $4,000 of care for young children, the Pell Grant $550 check, the repairs to the home if you live in a low-income community, and the $12,500 for the purchase of a new electric vehicle plus nutrition. That is the first of three classes of checks. The first add-on of checks is $25,000 for the purchase of your first home. Got it in there, and it's huge. The second class of checks, home repairs and paid leave. Paid leave, you have to stay home from work due to sickness or illness, and your home repairs to weatherize your home. The second add-on, it checks $250 billion of free home health care for seniors and people on disabilities. And then the third cost is checks seniors and free internet. Free internet for all checks, farmers checks, independent contractors checks, and then seniors checks. You're currently going over the details with me of the Build Back Better Act. Four stimulus recon, pass in the House, going to be passed in the Senate. The third add-on of checks comes from those legislators, and that, of course, is MSC. They would add this in on the Senate side, so let's go over the details of those MSCs right now. They represent it would be the same eligibility as a third stimulus check. Who gets it? Tune into Evenings Light in prime time, 5 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, 8 o'clock Central. I'll go over these checks in that broadcast tonight. But let's remember, it's the eligibility of a third stimulus check. So single individual, 75000 or less, you get it. Married couple, 150000 or less, you get it, double it. Family four, quadruple it. And then how much would it be? When would you get it? That's tonight on Evenings Light at 5 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, America's most watched show for financial news in prime time. Now, when we look at fourth stimulus and we talk about Build Back Better Act, not law yet, but what is law is this, $80,000 of checks, the homeowner's grant now alive, what I call the fourth stimulus add-on. Let's go right in it without any delay. I hope you remember. If you're not a member, go right in this video right now. This is live. Unlike Build Back Better Act, which is not a law yet, this is law, and it's incredible. First, how much is it? Fifteen to eighty thousand dollars per household. So the household has three to four or five, twenty members. You know, it's Utah. <laughs> Don't send me those messages. Uh, you know. <laughs> uh, you know, five sisters, wives. Yeah, it, it, it's still eighty, fifteen to eighty thousand dollars per household. That's number one. Number two, I can't believe I said that. Uh, number two, it is for all of you. So if you qualify for a third single check, you qualify for this as well. Seventy-five thousand or less, a single individual, you get it. Married couple, one hundred fifty thousand or less, you get it. You just have to own a home. If you don't and you're a renter, stay with me because I got money for you in just a second. It's called Third Stimulus. Third Stimulus pays for renters and homeowners. More about that in a second. Now, if you're on benefits, you get this as well. SSI, SSDI, Social Security, railroad benefits, veterans benefits, you get it as well. All you have to be is within that own zone of income qualification, which we just went over. So how do you do it? You First, you become a member. The link is at the top of the chat and also in the pinned comment. Open that membership newsletter. It comes Monday through Friday, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time via the YouTube alert system, which on the East Coast is 10 o'clock and on the Central Standard Time is 9 o'clock. Open the membership newsletter and in there it features the whole name of the program. It's not Homeowner's Grant because it's actually longer than that. Then it features the income qualifications. It features how to apply. It features what the money is for. And it features the link. It sends you right into the application. Now, the money is for property insurance, homeowner's assistance, rent, uh, property uh, 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 association fees, mortgage assistance, home repairs, and more. Here's some things to take away right now. One, 90% of all states, it pays for more than one item. So people who say it's just for mortgage assistance, no, you're looking at another program. You're not looking at this one. You're looking at the wrong program. Number two, 90 plus percent of the states, you do not have to be on behind on bills. Number three, you want to apply right away. You don't want to wait. This is just like day one of this channel, April 20th, 2020, when I was on the deserted beach of Hermosa Beach during a lockdown, and I pressed record on the very first recording of this channel. April 25th. I said in three days from then, PUA, Pandemic Unemployment Assistance, was about to go live. But I said apply the 25th. Don't wait till the 28th. Viewers, all two of them, <laughs> day one of the channel, that applied for that 25th application, they got funded, they got paid, moolah, on the 28th. People who waited to the 28th, they got paid a month later. So you don't want to wait. It's first come, first serve. As soon as this video is over and you watch all the other videos for today, then go apply because you want to be first in line. Someone applies after you, they're behind you. Now, next to remember is that... Every state has it, but different states have rolled it out at different elements. So, 
if your state is currently a teal state, it means it's receiving the applications and paying out. A pink state, it means it's receiving the applications but not yet paying out. So what I want you to say to me is I've applied and the application is complete. I'm so proud that I've had so many viewers, members of this channel, in the last 24 hours send me beautiful messages saying I've applied and the member and the application is complete and I'm a member. That fills my heart with warmth because it means they watched the video, they became members, they got the application on file a particular day fast, and they know because the, the, the system has told them the application is complete. That means they're getting paid, folks. That means they're getting paid as soon as the program goes live. Now, when we look at this map, it's important to understand that the map is not updated daily. It's not updated live. So I don't want you to think your state is pink, that maybe it's not teal now. It could be teal in 10 seconds from now, or maybe it was teal this morning and was pink last night. So don't rely upon the map as, as live. It's not really a live updated map. Let's look at the map. So here in states like California, New York, Florida, teal. Ohio or uh, pink and other states different colors. Don't worry if your state's different color, go right in and get ready to apply. If it says we're not accepting the applications today, then get ready to refresh the screen. Keep on refreshing the screen for every few days until you can submit the application and pounce Purple Hawk. Again, this is $80,000. How do you get this money? Become a member. The link is at the top of the chat and in the pinned comment. Top of the chat in the pinned comment. The link sends you right into this, the federal program, which sends you to the state program. And I'm so excited for viewers who have listened. People who have not listened or people said, I reached out to someone by phone. Oh, no, you should not be spending one second on the phone. You should be getting the application on file. Number two, people who say, I checked around and maybe it's not, maybe it is. No, no, no. Put the application on file. If you don't want the money, you can return it. Uh, it this is a grant. It's not a loan. There is, you do not have to refund the money. And it is not a credit check environment. There's no credit check. So go get it. That is the update on that. And here we go. You've waited for this day. I've waited for this day. What happened? It is the March 2022 FOMC meeting with Jay Powell. It just wrapped up, and you're watching this live for March 16th, 2022 at a quarter to 12. Let me tell you the lead up into today's meeting. Number one. The inflation number for December, as I predicted, was 8%. The Fed said it was going to be 1%. Real big miss. Wall Street says 2%. I said the inflation, and I said that all last year. I got it wrong. It was a big miss. Second, the last time the Federal Reserve raised rates, interest rates, was several years ago, far before the pandemic, far before the pandemic. Number three, the numbers that came in since last, since that December number are the following. The inflation number for January, 7.5%, as I predicted, 7.9%, as I predicted it, number, that was last Thursday. The PPI number released yesterday, a miss, did not hit the mark. It was weaker because it was a miss on inflation. This morning, I had the producer, the, the retail sales number, miss across the board, big miss. And that was because that retail sales was slumped because of inflation. People had less value to their money, especially in the auto market, massive miss. Uh, then, also, the bond traders have been trading up the 10-year Treasury note to 2 point plus percent, the highest we've seen since 2019, because they're predicting that inflation is higher. So they're doing the reverse. They're saying inflation is higher. And then UK set a half basis point. Uh, this essential, essential, the European Central Bank said need to be more aggressive because half base, because a quarter doesn't cut it. And then last month, Jay Powell telling us that today's meeting would be a quarter, but not telling us what the rest of the year would be until now. Here's your breaking news. The FOMC meeting has wrapped and Jay Powell has said he'll give you five, no, six interest rate spikes for 2022. Ooh, more aggressive. So he is not doing five rate hikes in the next five meetings. He's doing six rate hikes in the next six meetings. So all the remaining meetings of this year will have six or three spikes. If you've been listening to this channel since last year, we initially thought one, then five. Some people thought seven, then pulled back because of Putin to five, came in at six. So Jay Powell, number one, said six interest rate spikes. Number two, he did not, repeat, did not give us the interest rate spike for next month. But my reading, at least my interpretation of the way you read it, is that he's currently saying 
that in the universe we are right now, five quarters will work. That's not to say, I repeat, that's not to say if inflation gets worse, he won't throw in a half somewhere across the board. But let's take away. At the moment, five, six spikes of quarter is more aggressive than we thought just an hour ago. Six and quarter is more aggressive than we thought an hour ago. It is not faster aggressive than we thought an hour ago. So this is big for your SSI. What I've been talking about uh, for your SS300, I've been talking about this for about three weeks. My prediction was that if Joe Biden swaps COLA for inflation now in March, we're five. We're five. Quarter basis point, exactly what I predicted, exactly what Jay Powell told us. Then what about for the April meeting? It looks like from the wording from Jay Powell that the next meeting will also be a quarter basis point unless we see some astronomical inflation number later this month or early this next month. Then maybe he'll do a half basis point. I don't see that astronomical out of the ordinary number coming in. L then what about May? I'm going to read you the analysis report. Many, analysis, many analysts now think that May could be the trigger part. part. That May, if inflation is so bad still worse in April, then May is where Jay Powell's going to come in. So let me read Jay Powell's comments minutes ago. This is breaking news. This is the FOMC meeting. I just gave you the summary. Let me give you the deet Let me give you the comment. The comment was that the rates for now will be at a, half, a quarter basis point for March and will stay there indefinitely, but could go to a half basis point if it gets more severe. Now, that was the result. The March meeting was approved at a quarter basis point with everyone with one dissent, St. Louis President James Boulard, who wanted a half basis point. He thinks a quarter is not enough. No surprise there. Boulard always wants to be more aggressive. This is the first interest rate spike since December 2018. So this is far for, far from the uh, before the pandemic. In addition, the committee expects to begin reducing its holdings of Treasury securities. This is the balance sheet part of the equation. Now, let's go over the rest of the FOMC meeting notes because this is big for your SS300. Currently, the, the Fed is looking at doing about 175 basis points this year. How does that add up? It's basically six meetings at 25, six times 25. So they're giving us guidance that they're trying to do 175, but they think that maybe they have to do more. Inflation remains elevated, reflecting supply and demand imbalances related to the pandemic, higher energy prices, and broader price pressures. How did you translate that? I'm going to translate that as Putin, like, Putin did this. We also have the gas situation by Putin, and we also have supply chain, which may be China's breaking news the last few days. The invasion of Ukraine by Russia is causing tremendous human and economic hardship, said the Federal Reserve. So the Federal Reserve did name check Putin and saying this is why we have to do this at the moment. The implications for the United States economy are highly uncertain. Hey, that's what I've been telling you. But in near term, the invasion related events are likely to be input on inflation higher up and economic activity. Translation, this could be far worse than we know right now, what I've been telling you. I'm going to go over this just a second. And that for now, we know it's disrupting gasoline. What else? We don't know just yet. What was the reaction? The markets traded negatively on this news. Bonds went up higher to 2.22%. Folks, I mean, this is really high. The 10-year Treasury note to 2.22. I mean, it was two yesterday or the day before, maybe Friday. It was in the 1.8s just a few days ago. The bond traders are betting that it's going to go much higher very quickly. Uh, the, 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 the Fed is now realizing that its transitory language from last year was a very big miss. I told them it was a miss. I said all last year. This thing that I do with my handle all last year where Fed said it was transitory. The Fed kept saying it's transitory. It's going to go back down and go and, and, and going to hit this peak in December, go back down. Transitory, temporary. I said, I don't buy it. You're wrong. It's not happening. Uh, they now admit they messed up. Did they mention me? They didn't. Uh, but they did mention Bacon. <laughs> No, they did not mention bacon. Uh, what else did the Fed say? The Fed said that um, the situation is very fluid and it may pivot across the board. So what is the reaction on Wall Street? The reaction on Wall Street, of course, is very negative. Let me tell you where the markets are right now on the news. Uh, the initial fall 
uh, is reversed. Oh boy. So the Dow is now up 140. That is very fluid across the board. Initially, the stock market really took a bad hitting hit and it, it is now pivoted to 140. I don't understand for it to go down. It doesn't make no sense because we already know that this was the news for today. The six spikes, yeah, that is breaking news. We did not know that. And we did not know the sort of microcosm where the where the Fed is really saying, I see Putin, but I don't know everything about Putin. So there you go. Joe, make the call. Swap out color for inflation right now. That'll bring us up uh, $200 a, 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 a pop right now. And if Jay Powell does oof, 175 basis points in the in those six meetings, I'm, I'm trying to process this breaking news. If he does 175 basis points in six meetings, is that another $100 later this year? Let me think about this because we were looking at 4% by December, which would be another $100. Um, I have to look at the notes again. I think Jay Powell is trying to get us to 1% by December. So that would potentially not give you $100 later this year. I'm, I'm remembering my the notes by off, offhand. I'll review the notes and have them ready for you at, at prime time at Evening's LA. For now, $200, it could happen. I don't know if $100 could happen later this year if he reaches that goal of 1% inflation or 1.75% inflation in December. That would not be another $100 later this year, folks. That would be about you know $30. Um, that is why you went Joe to make the swap right now. Remember, 25 basis points, quarter basis point, now you're good. Next month, quarter basis point, 25, you're good. It's that it's anything worse than that or anything more aggressive than that in April, May. That's where I start to worry across the board. All right, with that, let's go back to those incredible checks. $80,000 of checks in round live. I want you to get those checks. They are live and they are that fourth stimulus add on. You want to get that membership newsletter. The link is under the video right now. Get that membership newsletter so you get those checks. In the second half of this video, we'll be going over more about that SS300 checks, more about that Build Back Better checks, more about the CR for stimulus checks. And then we'll be turning to the situation with Lambert Putin. That is your six stimulus checks. A lot coming up. And I have the latest details from Zelensky, Putin, uh, the potential ceasefire, the oil, the wheat. It's a huge recording with a lot of opinion later in this recording. You only hear my opinions on the war and the economic impact on this recording. As home edition, if you're watching live on air at 11 a.m., continues and stream and stimulus if you're watching in prime time. See you back in 60 seconds as the big edition goes into the second half. But during this commercial break, become a member, get that incredible newsletter lined up. I'll see you back in 60 seconds as all the details go into a big second half. From the shores of Santa Monica to the shores of the Black Sea. If you want money right now, not five days from now, and not five weeks from now, then reach out to the community page. The volunteers can help you find that money for rent and utilities. That's at news.la.com forward slash community. The community page features a series of volunteers who are viewers like you. They can help you find rent, utilities, SNAP, food benefits, mortgage assistance, and help you with eviction moratorium questions as well. Their Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram individuals reach out to them and indicate the city and state you're from, and they'll get back to you shortly. That's a community page. Volunteers working for you, viewers helping one another. Stay with LA for more. Join LA Late Daily for the excitement of the new LA Late Live Daily. The excitement starts on mornings LA Late at 9 a.m. Home LA Late returns at 11 a.m. daily. And then afternoons LA Late at 1 p.m. Join us daily as the excitement continues live from Santa Monica on LA Late. And the details continue in the big second half of 
Home Alight and Stream the Stimulus Edition. You know, during the commercial break, I re-reviewed the notes from the Federal Reserve, and I do have an update. So the Federal Reserve is looking at about 1.9% rate by the end of the year as your inflation rate. In fact, they want to see rates somewhere about one5 uh, and then some see it about 3%. Let me go over this that detail right now because it's very, very fluid. Later this year, the Fed is looking at a target of one5 to 3% inflation. It depends on which Fed member. This is part of the collective group. So 1.5 wouldn't cut it. I mean, it's lower than what we talk about later this year at 4%. 3% is, a, is closer to 4%. What does this mean for your benefits? Let's look at the analysis. For SS beneficiaries, you had that benchmark last year of COLA, 5.9%. So we're trying to swap out COLA for inflation right now when it's 8% before it goes down. Now, the quarter basis point today is not going to drop it at all that much because it takes a month to float into the system. And it's not going to be that uh, significant. It's three meetings of this, March, April, May, anything more severe. But let's look at that end of the year. That end of the year is very fascinating because if the Fed is looking at 1.5%, that's nothing. Nothing. 1.5% increase on top of your existing benefits. That is nothing. That would be one of the lowest lifts you've ever had for your benefits across the board if it's inflation. Now, if it's 3%, that's a little bit better. That might be about $90 more per month. That's a lifetime. So that's why you really want Biden to make that swap across the board. All right, see if our stimulus. The Federal Reserve, excuse me, the, the Federal Government passed the continuing resolution last week, did not put a $2,000 stimulus check, but put county stimulus in there. How do you get that county stimulus? It's featured tonight in prime time on Evening's Ally. The White House under Joe Biden is going back this week with a CR add-on. I'll feature that tonight in Evening's LA, how the White House is going back to try to ask for more money in a CR add-on. It's fascinating. Then, Build Back Better Act happening with those potential MSC checks. We already covered that. The other thing you need to know is that rent, third stimulus, is still paying out. If you're new to this channel, there's a numbering system. The numbering system does not mean that one has to be done before the other. So first stimulus was COVID. Second was to be for COVID. It didn't happen. Third was coming out of COVID. Fourth is coming out of COVID. Fifth is for seniors. It's still happening. And then six is happening now across the board. It's for Putin. It's also called uh, it's also called recession stimulus. The concept started no less than three weeks ago. It started because of the allegiance of the White House, progressive, France, progressive, and Germany, progressive. The trifecta will tee this up in April. If Germany and the United States watch Macron, the leader of France, re-elected in April, why is this being done? Because the leadership of the three countries agree that we all need, for moral reasons, to get off of Russian products, not just oil. And in getting off of Russian products, our economies are not ready to buffer this. We cannot afford $4 a gallon through the month of May or we go into recession. We cannot afford $7 a loaf of bread or we go into recession. And to buffer that, they're going to debt spend, they have agreed, and increase stimulus on their citizens internationally, domestically, Biden with us, and then at a state level. Yes, as soon as I made the first recording about six stimulus, March 8th, 2022, state governors announced their version on a state-by-state -state basis. This may look like something along the lines of a tax holiday. We have to pay taxes on gasoline, dropping it from $4 to $1 overnight. Fascinating. But what is six stimulus? It's this massive spending where they're going to raise debt and spend money on you, and it's being caused for a series of factors. And I have the update on each of those factors. And boy, there's a lot of breaking news right now from oil, wheat, ceasefire, and then the situation for the banks and China. A lot of breaking news. And we we'll start right now with all of that breaking news. And the first one we're going to turn to is the China part of the equation. China is part of the equation. Why? Because if we were to sanction China overnight, imagine what would happen to your Apple iPhone. Imagine what would happen to the furniture that's imported to the United States from China. It would not be available, and suddenly the prices would go through the roof. So sanctioning China is one of the new threats. Why? Because the White House got intelligence last week that Russia reached out to China to provide economic support for the war. What is the breaking news right today? The breaking news is that Russia's confirming it. China's denying it. Not that they've given the money, that they was asked for the money. And the breaking news right now is that Russian officials confirmed that they asked China for the money. Uh, 
China says the report is false, but also said it would not be told what to do. Wow. What did the White House do? The White House had a seven-hour meeting with Chinese officials in Rome yesterday, March 15th, in which they verbally went out after China to say, do not give up any to Russia. To offset our sanctions, the Western allies' sanctions against Russia for this war. Guess what happened? No briefing of the press about that meeting. So the latest briefing tonight, today, from the White House is we're not going to brief you on it. We will not brief this to the American people. Uh, the press secretary, Joe Biden, says we're not going to do a briefing on it. We're not going to have this in the public forum. This comes as China, in my opinion, cannot afford to do this. Why? Because they're suffering a major swift of their, a shift of their economy. The growth projections are smaller because they're suffering a sixth wave of Omicron right now of coronavirus, and also their economy just keeps on going down and up. Today, the economy saw the, the largest lift of their stock market in nearly a generation. Stocks up 40% across the board overnight. This is after they were down dramatically because of that news yesterday. But Russia's finance minister, Anton Solofov, said Sunday that his country, Russia, did ask for economic partnership with China to allow Russia to survive through this war. This would be an act of aggression against the United States and the Western allies, and that's why the Western allies have denounced it. So China and its part of the equation, we don't know what it is, and this could change by the minute. Could change by a major sanctioning of, of China if China does do it. There's no evidence that China has done it yet, number one. Number two, oil. The situation on oil is very fluid, and let me tell you what it is. It's twofold. Number one, it's domestic oil, and number two, it's oil for our partners. Let's go with the analysis. We have an economy in the United States. It can't go into recession. We also have our partner allies. They can't go into recession. If they go into recession, we go into recession. So, so for example, if we don't solve the situation for our partner ally of France and they go into recession, they draw us into recession. A newer poll released yesterday of financial analysts on Wall Street said that 50% of them believe that the European partners are going into recession. 33% thought the U.S. is going into recession. What do I think? I think the same as a lot of analysts believe, which is if energy prices, price of gasoline at the pump, stays where it is at $4 a gallon through the month of May, we're going to two years of recession. I also believe that the current wheat prices, grain, commodities, set current levels, which are 10-year highs, we're going to recession. Let's analyze how we fix it across the board starting right now. First, energy. In the United States, we have to fix it by increasing production domestically. The production of gasoline domestically has to be ramped up, and it only comes by order from the White House. That order hasn't come. I called for the order to ramp up production day one of the invasion of Ukraine. White House has done it, hasn't done it. The White House understood this energy situation day one last year, and I understood it as well. I told you about it. In October 2021, I told the viewership of this channel, the biggest economic story of 2022 will be a potential Russian invasion of Ukraine. How could I say that? Because there's 100,000 Russian troops at the Korean border before Halloween last year. The biggest buildup since the Cold War. So I said, that happens. Get ready for a major economic story, the biggest of next year. Well, it happened. And day one of the invasion, I said, get ready. We need to ramp up production. Where are we at the time of this recording? March 16, 2022, just after 12 noon. The White House has not ordered the increase of production domestically, number one. The White House first three weeks of the invasion would avoid the subject matter altogether. Series of interviews by the Under Treasury Secretary Jad Yellen avoided the subject matter. West Texas and the oil producers of the Texas region have all asked the White House they're ready to increase production for Americans by Americans since day one of the invasion. The White House has refused to increase production. The White House has not given that order to increase production. At the same time, what has the White House and Democrats done? The Democrats earlier this week wrote the letter to the President of the United States saying, Let's pass Build Back Better Act to get EV going. The White House wrote the letter back to Congress. Let's pass Build Back Better Act to get EV going. Oh, my goodness. And Brian D.C., the chief of the Economic Council, Joe Biden, says the reason why we need to get climate change is because of this. Climate change need, we need in the United States, but not today. We need to increase production. So if we increase production, what would happen? This is what would happen. If we increase production domestically in the right location, that would bring down our price of gasoline at the pump because we only import 3% from Russia. 
Now, we have, to input, we have to increase production at the right place. Wex, Texas does not work, so some, some gasoline analysts. Why? Because they see it's not refinery ready. If it's not refinery ready, it means it can't go into the gas pumps. Where do we do it? In the Gulf region is where some analysts say that is Russia equivalent, Middle East equivalent. Now, if we did this day one, if we did this today, bring down the price of gasoline, about 433 nationally today, nationally today the AAA gas price index. But that's not enough. It is not enough. And I got to tell you, the Western allies under Jad Yellen took less than 10 days to increase the corporate minimum tax rate. 10 days. We're week three of this invasion and there's no deal by the partner allies to get gasoline from anywhere. Let's look at the status of each of them one at a time, and I give you my opinion on each of those respective countries. Uh, and tonight I feature more of this in Evening's Ally in prime time. Number one, for those partner countries to get off of gasoline, why is the concern there? Because they're 40% dependent on Russia. Germany, France cannot get off of Russian oil if they don't have something lined up. So let's look at the options for each of them one at a time. And these are options for us because remember, if Germany and France go into recession, we go into recession. All right, first, Venezuela. Biggest producer of gasoline worldwide, biggest exporter. Can we rely on Venezuela gasoline? No. They're the most sanctioned country in the United States when it comes to gasoline after Vladimir Putin. So this is not an option unless the White House pursues the Western allies to relieve some of those sanctions. They haven't even had this discussion, haven't even had the discussion. Number two, Iran. Now, this one's fascinating. Iran, since 2015, has not had its gasoline in circulation for the Western allies. Why not? Because since 2015, they've been the result, the recipient of an embargo because of nuclear proliferation, nuclear buildup. Negotiations have improved in recent weeks. Day one of the invasion, I told you this was an option, but not a quick option because it takes several weeks to do it. The negotiations have been United States, Iran, Germany and France in Vienna, day in, day out. And no less than a week ago, it looked like we would have a deal, which would involve not providing them nuclear warheads. Someone has said, are we providing? No, 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 no. We, we have them agreeing to disarm the nuclear warheads, and then we agree to lift their embargo, and then millions, millions, millions of barrels of gasoline. This is not Texas, folks. This is millions of barrels of gasoline. Float internationally into the US economy. You see the best prices you've seen for nearly seven, eight, 10 years. It's incredible. So what happened? Last Sunday, I delivered the breaking details. Those negotiators were shocked that Putin interfered and called off the talks, told Iran to stop. Whoa. So what was the breaking details on this one yesterday for March 6th? The breaking details on this yesterday was that Russia's envoy to the UN said, um, no, the negotiations are back on. Uh, I got to tell you, I'm going to double check tonight for evenings I light, but as of last night, the negotiations were not on. So for him to say that doesn't really help anyone. It's just sort of, you know, we know that Russia stopped the negotiations. And so where are the negotiations right now? No inherent situation. Why is gasoline improved? The Financial Times is reporting a potential ceasefire. More about that second. But that's not why the gasoline improved. The, initially, the prices dropped yesterday based upon the, the statement by that Russian uh, uh, uh foreign minister, but it, it, it was just thinly veiled. Okay, what's the next country? Iraq doesn't work. They were part of a rumor a week ago. They're part of OPEC Plus. Putin has reached out to OPEC Plus, which he's part of, says do not ramp up production, help America there, go after America. So that's not happening. What about UAE? This is the one that makes the most sense to me. They are a a, a, a partner country in the United States. We've helped them a lot. Why don't they help us? They're part of OPEC Plus. Again, OPEC Plus has not, reached, has not reached an agreement. Here's the problem, is that OPEC Plus features a lot of countries which are our allies. Now, some countries which are sort of neutral for the United States. They're more Putin ally or they're sort of in the middle. They're hedging their bets. The White House has done nothing with this OPEC Plus group. The OPEC Plus group has refused to ramp up production. They've actually said that. They're not changing the situation. Wheat. Wheat is the one that worries the socks off of me. Why? Because there are more people who buy wheat, buy bread, that pump them, than pump their gas. You may be able to afford $4 a gallon, but can you afford $7 a loaf? 
most people cannot afford $7 a loaf of bread. And that is where we're heading. Why? This is very scary news, folks. Egypt, 80% of Egypt's wheat comes from Ukraine and Russia. Our partner allies, major amounts of wheat come from the partner allies. That wheat is about to be gone for not one, but three crop rotations at least. Why? The farmers are battling Putin in the, not battling the fields. The farmers are not harvesting the season. The season is lost. They're not prepping next season. They're not watering for next season. That season is lost. And if Putin is bombing the, the crops, the seasons are lost for years to come. If that crop is not available in circulation, then guess what? It don't matter how much wheat we produce here. We can't flood enough to offset that loss of wheat from the Ukrainian and Russian market. Now, what can we do? What can we do? As featured on yesterday's video, yes, I believe that the White House has missed the, missed the ball on this one as well. The White House day one of this administration, day one of the invasion, in fact, since October of last year, should have immediately got ready to evoke a lot of the wartime powers of the President of the United States, or at least a lot of the executive powers of the United States, to give stimulus to U.S. farmers to increase production. How would this work? We have existing farmers who can increase production due to subsidies from the federal government that would flood the market with more wheat, bring down the prices internationally. Ukraine, Russian wheat gone, good. We're going to flood it with U.S.-made wheat. It's better than oil. We don't have the ability to flood the market massively with oil, and we can't send oil from here to, you know, to the other side of the globe. Wheat is easier. That is easier. We can flood the market with wheat and export it. We can use the U.S. dollar. We can use the wartime acts and a lot of these defense spending to get that wheat overseas. That is good. Soybean, corn, even nickel. All these commodities are dramatically impacted by Vladimir Putin. None of this has been prepared for by the White House. Then the Russian default. Yes. Today is March 16th, and Russia will likely default on its debt tonight. But let me tell you what is not a concern, not for me tonight. My concern is April 1st. If we get to April 1st, let me tell you why we may not get to April 1st. This is part of my opinion as well. My opinion is that if there was ever a date that Vladimir Putin is scared of, it's April 1st. Why? Because Putin is going to see his country default. And if his country defaults, we've not seen anything like this in decades for come. A default by the Putin regime would send his economy into an environment that you, you, you can't imagine. It's worse than even Cuba. The dates that I want you to go uh, that I want you to know are the following. It was featured last night on Evening's LA. I'm gonna feature them again tonight across the board. These dates are the following. That while there is about a hundred million dollars of interest due today. That's not what I'm concerned about. What I'm concerned about is April 1st. On April 1st is when Vladimir Putin has a massive debt obligations. And if he can't meet those debt obligations for principle, not for interest, then guess what happens? It's bad news. The reason why is because he cannot access the funds to pay for the money. If he can't access the funds to pay for the money, guess what? Big problems. Now, those problems are not just for him. They're problems for us because guess what happens? If a Russian economy defaults and the U.S. has any exposure to that default, we have big problems. Where's exposure? The U.S. banks. We do not know at the time of this recording how much exposure U.S. banks have to Russian debt, which is about to become valueless, going to default, and Russian equities, which are likely to plummet to no value. We had one brokerage house earlier this week saying the risk for the last first two months is not there. <laughs> We're in the third month of the year. <laughs> Doesn't count. Uh, so that comment was sort of, you know, didn't really help us. Here's the problem. If U.S. banks go under because they had exposure to Russia debt with massive line on losses for Q2, Q3, 2022, guess what? That's why you need six stimulus. It would be like the stimulus package you may not remember. It was the first one done by this guy. Not during his administration, during the Obama administration. George Bush Jr. saw a massive implosion of the banking industry at the very last days of administration. So Obama and Biden had to come in and bail out the banking industry. This would be why there's six stimulus. Yes, six stimulus is for a lot of reasons. One, gasoline. Two, wheat and grain. Third, any other commodities that are negative impacted by Vladimir Putin. Uh, four, 
anything with China or that caused supply chain disruption, which is what we were worried about earlier this week. And five, any implosion of the housing market. These are very fluid situations, and folks, no one has assessed these risks. They have not assessed this risk. Wall Street has assessed the risk for oil. That's easy. That's easy. How, why is oil easy? You put in a barge, you ship it out. It's that simple. It gets there in two weeks. Wheat, it's a very complicated issue. Multiple seasons of crops lost. What dependency? We don't know how much dependency our partner allies have on wheat. Because wheat makes more than just bread. It makes a lot more items. And wheat is used more than gasoline. So it's very, very fluid. Uh, then the banking industry, we don't know the exposure because a lot of banks aren't telling us the exposure. This is very, very scary. And this is sort of certainly what Jay Powell is talking about. Now, here's what you need to know. Soft landing, hard landing. Today was a soft landing. Jay Powell gave us a soft landing, quarter basis point, 25 basis point. Hard landing is Jay Powell says, you know what? I'm going to smack you really hard. I'm going to give you a half basis point. At the moment, it looks like he's doing soft landing. He's slowly easing you into something throughout the year. Six interest rate spikes in six meetings. Not a big bat hitting you hard in April and May. But here's the concern, and here's my opinion as well. Jay Powell got it very wrong last year. He got it very wrong. A kid with a purple shirt here in Los Angeles that has an MBA got it right. But I got, you know, he got it very wrong. He said one to two percent was going to surge to a uh, to a to a transitory spike in December last year and maybe January and then come back down. He's very wrong. So it, it did not do that. The bond traders are now suggesting Jay Powell may still have it wrong that inflation is hotter, and. I got to tell you, I think he's reading the cards wrong. My concern when it's inflation is the following. China disruption. What is China disruption? China disruption, supply chain. Supply chain could throw us into massive inflation for two reasons. One, if China cannot get us our, its products or our products because they're made in China uh, because of COVID-6 wave. This was the major story last weekend. We don't know the issue still. We don't know the answer still. Number two, China can't get us the products because potentially we sanction China because if they see them funding the Russian war. That could send us to, to massive inflation. And guess what? Then Jay Powell will come in really strong. I don't think Jay Powell is reading the Russia part of the equation. Why? Why? Because if Russia causes stagflation, which is where the inflation stays at about 8%, but the economy contracts, our economy gets smaller, businesses make less money. Suddenly, he's hitting too hard. He is causing the wrong policy adjustment. At the moment, I think he's doing right. My problem is I don't know if he's going to read Russia correct and what is going on for Russia. The breaking news is that the Russian foreign prime ministers, I'll have an evening's ally tonight at prime time, says that a ceasefire could work if Ukraine agrees to be another Sweden. A Sweden is a neutral country that will defend itself but not participate in aggressions against other countries. That would mean that Ukraine would not defend Belarus or defend France but would defend itself. Better than two days ago where Putin did not want Ukrainian Ukrainians ever have arms. Now he would say, I'll let you have arms, but you cannot become part of NATO or the UN or anything like that, or the EU. Interesting. Ukraine's minister, uh, Zelensky, addressed a joint session of Congress today. I have a lot of opinions about this, and I don't know if I want to say them on air. But one of my, one of my thoughts is the following. I don't, think the, I don't think it should have ever happened. I don't think it should have ever happened. I don't like Congress doing this. And I don't know why Nancy Pelosi, Speaker of the House, allowed it. You know why I don't like it? The person the president of Ukraine should speak to is the president of the United States. You don't speak to the Congress because it looks like you're going around the president before you even know what he's about to say. Well, let me tell you what he said. He sent for them to do Congress stuff that the president would not do for him. So he not only went around the president by speaking to Congress, he then delivered substance that goes around the president. I don't like it. And I don't know why Nancy Pelosi allowed it as a Democrat, allowing Zelensky to basically say, hey, Biden won't do certain things for me. Let's get Nancy to have her group do it for me. 
Um, it looks bad, and in all the recordings of 2021, I always told you, Nancy's very good on optics. She's very good on optics. And she always, you remember the time when the Blue Dog said, uh, we want to extend on employment assistance in, uh, in summer of 2021. She said they never said that. Well, of course they said that. She, doesn't want, she did not want to show dissent among Democrats. This is a very bad look for Nancy, and I'm not referring to the hairstyle. I'm referring to what she did today. She allowed Zelensky to go around the president and speak to the Congress about stuff that the president refused to give Zelensky and then basically say, hey, Congress, do it because the president won't do it for me. It's a bad look uh, for the Congress whose House is led by Nancy Pelosi and whose Senate is led by Chuck Schumer. Now, if you think that they wanted to do it because Republicans wanted to do it, uh, you, you know, then, then maybe, but I am bothered that they did it in a way that makes it look like they're throwing the president on the bus. Now, obviously, Republicans would want to do it because they want, would want to throw the president on the bus. So what does Zelensky do? Zelensky is basically trying to um, ask for assistance. And the assistance is very controversial, which I'm not going to go into in this video. It's military assistance of the nature of the military assistance in the no-fly zone. I'm not going to really cover in the video because it's not economic. As to the uh, as to the economic assistance, he you know he just got economic assistance last week from the Congress. So was this address to say thank you? Was his address to say, uh, I need more economic? No, it was really to focus on the military. And that is really why I'm not going to cover it, because it's not a military channel. Finally, let me remind you something, that when the White House, when the White House last week gave assistance to Ukraine, it was in the nature of military, military training, military equipment. It was not dollars. So I want you to understand that across the board. The situation is very fluid. The... We do not know from the Ukrainian officials that they would accept this Sweden situation, but it looks like it's exactly what they vowed never to do, which was they wanted to be part of NATO, they wanted to be part of the European community. So very, very fluid across the board. Where are we on the troops at the moment? The Russian troops are still around the Ukrainian capital. Yesterday, a, 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 a group of three ministers of Slavic countries visited the Ukrainian capital uh, to to show their support, which was shocking. It was wonderful. I mean, they went into a war zone, into a capital that's surrounded. I don't know how they physically got it done, that they got in there and got out safely. I, I salute them. It's just shocking. Um, but now the situation is very fluid across the board. Tonight on Amy's LA, I'll be reviewing more of those FMC meetings notes for you and have them for you. I'll be looking over whether Russia did default on those two interest rate payments tonight. And then I'll have the latest details on that $80,000 of checks. And more money. As one viewer got $26,000 from third stimulus yesterday. Rent assistance, one viewer got $26,000. Yes, you can get $26,000 for rent. Yes, you get $80,000 for rent. Yes, you can get the CR for stimulus from the county that's now live. Yes, you can get Build Back Better Act when it becomes live. Yes, you can get all these sun crawl sums of money. What do you have to do? You need to tune to e tune in to Evenings LA tonight at 5 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, 7 Central. If you're watching the show live on air, your next show is Afternoons LA. And if you're watching a taped edition, then coming up is Evenings Extra. Stay informed, stay focused, and stay with LA for more.